Hi, I'm John Green. Welcome to my salon. This is Mental Floss Video, and do you know there have been scientific studies attempting to determine why toast lands butter side down? One, published in 2001, examined this phenomenon by having 1,000 kids drop toast about 21,000 total times across several experiments. 62% of drops resulted in the toast landing butter side down, a number virtually identical to toast with just a B written on it, proving that the actual butter was irrelevant relevant, the three most important factors, height, position, and rotation speed. Anyway, that's the first of many scientific studies about food I'm going to share with you today. Let's continue with more research on toast. One study published in 2014 explained the phenomenon of seeing Jesus or the Virgin Mary or other faces in toast. Basically, there's something known as face pareidolia, when somebody assumes they're gonna see a face, they're more likely to. In this study, men were connected to an fMRI machine while looking at static, and when they expected to see a face in the static, the fusiform face area in the brain lit up, but it didn't when they anticipated another image or no image at all. A famous food study was conducted in 19. At Case Western Reserve University, participants were brought into a room that smelled like cookies and also contained sweets. One group was allowed to eat chocolate, and another group ate radishes. Then both groups did puzzles, and the ones that had to resist the temptation to eat chocolate weren't able to focus as effectively on the puzzle as the chocolate eaters or a control group. The researchers concluded that self-control is a resource that can be drained. However, there is also the possibility that it is just annoying to be brought into a room, forced to eat radishes, and then to do puzzles. In fact, new evidence suggests the conclusion was wrong, and there's no such thing as ego depletion as they called it. Speaking of temptation, one study found that five-year-olds who get less than 11 hours of sleep at night are more enticed by visuals or reminders of their favorite food. Kids who slept more were less susceptible to temptation. A very different study had kids between the ages of 6 and 10 either eat pre-cut chicken or chicken on the bone, and the researchers found that children who ate chicken off the bone exhibited more social aggression, like not listening. My question for the researchers is how did you get six-year-old children to eat chicken in any form other than nuggets? Did you threaten them with radishes? Okay, let's move on to vegetables. In a study published in 2012, researchers interviewed 500 moms who had at least two kids living at home, and then the moms were shown various dishes. Some featured vegetables, some didn't. And the women tended to rate the meals with vegetables as likely to be tastier. The Cornell University Food and Brand Lab has conducted a few studies about whether eating before grocery shopping affects what we buy. Like in one, 120 people were split into three groups. Some were given an apple, others were given a cookie, and others ate nothing. Then they all went to the supermarket, and those who ate the apple ended up buying 28% more fruits and vegetables than the cookie group, and 25% more than the no food group. But I would submit that the amount of fruits and vegetables we buy is only loosely correlated with the amount of fruits and vegetables we eat. Anyway, speaking of health, a study published in 2015 had six men stay in bed for a week. How do I sign up for this study? They ate 6,000 calories a day of things like pizza, Pizza, burgers, and cookies. Meredith, I'm asking you to do one thing for me. Sign me up for this study. Anyway, they gained an average of seven and a half pounds each, and within two days they had all developed insulin resistance, a precursor to diabetes. I'll take my chances. I'm still into the study. Researchers from Iowa State University once conducted a study at a YMCA in which they put up a digital display of a salad for young campers to see, and it was correlated with up to a 90% increase in salad consumption. But that works for both healthy and unhealthy food there's a mountain of evidence that pictures on menus influence our orders. Another interesting menu factoid, when we see a dollar sign, we spend less. Research from Cornell University looked at how much customers spend at a restaurant in the Culinary Institute of America, and they found that people spent much more when there was no dollar sign in front of prices. $8.95 what? Gold doubloons? Nickels? Whatever, I'll buy it. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention has reported that Yelp is a good source for tracking foodborne illnesses. In New York, for instance, instance, public health officials were able to pin down three separate outbreaks over the course of nine months by getting data from over 300,000 reviews. So just a couple helpful food poisoning strategies, stay hydrated and don't forget to post to Yelp. In a study published in 2015, researchers developed an app for their 156 participants to log every single thing they ate for three weeks, and they found that most people claim to eat three meals each day, but actually eat, quote, frequently and erratically, meaning that most of us are grazers. For years, athletes 
athletes have claimed that pickle juice is a magic cure for muscle cramps, and a recent study from Brigham Young University had 10 men test that theory. They cycled until they had perspired enough to experience mild dehydration, and then shocks to their tibial nerve were induced, causing cramping. Oh my goodness! It's like the opposite of that study where you get to stay in bed and eat pizza. Afterwards, some got pickle juice and some got water. Can you imagine the study person coming up to you and saying, oh, I've just induced cramps in your dehydrated legs, here's some pickle juice, but... The researchers found that the pickle juice did make the cramps go away 37% faster. Speaking of how to refuel post-workout, one study looked at the best way to replenish glycogen, an energy supply that depletes during exercise, and the researchers compared fast food, Gatorade, energy drinks, supplements, and other snacks and all of them replenished the glycogen of participants. These were people who had fasted for 12 hours and then worked out for 90 minutes, and everything did work. Although I should probably note that fast food has its own health drawbacks. Speaking of fast food, let's talk about salt for a moment. There are many reasons to limit your salt intake, but studies have shown that eating it might actually help prevent infection. In experiments involving both mice and people, sodium levels increase around an infection after salt consumption, and when salt isn't eaten, bacteria around an infection is more likely to thrive. But if you want to be financially savvy, you should definitely avoid salty food. Despite popular belief, healthy food is cheaper than salty or sugary food, according to the Department of Agriculture. In a study, they examined food by the average portion price, and portions of bananas, lettuce, and pinto beans were found to be less expensive expensive than french fries, ice cream, or soft drinks. A Pennsylvania State University study found some gender differences when it comes to our enjoyment of spicy food. Men report liking it more than women do. And interestingly, the researchers also administered a personality test and found that men who claimed to like spicy food tended also to desire peer admiration. One cool study used menus from Hawaiian restaurants to understand how fish populations fluctuate. They collected menus from 154 different restaurants between the years of 19 and 1974, and they were able to observe which fish populations were abundant in Hawaii when. For instance, jackfish started to disappear from menus around 1935, and by 1960 it was very rare. In an experiment published in 2005, researchers fed unknowing participants soup from bowls that refilled on their own. They ate 73% more soup than those eating from regular bowls. And most surprisingly, participants didn't even suspect that their bowl was secretly being refilled filled, they also did not report feeling more full than the control group. The human brain is so weird and so easy for food companies to hack. Another thing that affects how much we consume, restaurant lighting. Researchers once turned part of a Hardee's fast food restaurant into a fine dining establishment by lowering the lighting in one area and playing softer music, and in that section people stayed at their tables longer, but ate less food than those who were in the brightly lit section. A four-week-long study split 36 women participants into three groups. Groups, ones told to eat a probiotic yogurt twice a day, ones who ate a fake yogurt twice a day, and a control group. After four weeks, the women were given fMRI scans, and the researchers found that those who ate the probiotic yogurt had less brain activity in the parts of their brain associated with bodily sensations, but increased connectivity in parts related to cognition. Which raises the possibility that our intellectual capacity is ultimately defined, at least in part, not by us, but by the microbes colonizing us. Another yogurt study happened at MIT in 2011 when researchers experimented with the diets of 80 mice. They were mainly interested in how the animals would respond to probiotics, and the mice who got diets consisting of 50% yogurt had fur that was dramatically shinier, and female yogurt-eating mice even had more babies. Full disclosure, I spend quite a lot of my free time thinking about who exactly is running the show here. Is it the mammals or the microbes? In 2013, the Natural Resources Defense Council and Harvard Law released a report about food safety, and according According to them, 90% of people in the United States are throwing away their food early because they don't understand labels like best before and sell by. So just for the record, take it from somebody who's pretty afraid of food contamination, sell by does not mean eat by. It just means sell by. And finally, I return to my salon to tell you about some research that would never be conducted today. In 1939, Dr. Clara Marie Davis published a study in which she had 15 babies 
make their own food choices. The children had just been weaned off of milk, and she let them choose between 33 different food options for various amounts of time, some for over four years others for less. And infants were surprisingly good at choosing a balanced diet with high nutritional value. Davis believed that they had the instincts to keep themselves alive and healthy. However, all the options she gave the children were healthy, so it might not be as valid in a world of fried donut burgers. Thanks for watching Mental Floss Video, which is made with the help of all of these nice people. I'm sorry your parents didn't let you make your own food choices beginning when you were nine months old, but let me know what your favorite brand of probiotic yogurt is in the comments. Mine's Activia. And as we say in my hometown, don't forget to be awesome.